entered no digits. Please re-enter your access code followed by uh, hash te for hash sign. Testing one two three four. Um, can everybody can anybody hear hear me on on the presentation? No digits. We aren't receiving your number entry due to. Hang on one second. Let me just check. Uh, you can hear me. Okay, great. I don't. I don't know what was going on before. Okay. All righty. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your um, your patience. Uh, I don't know why the audio wasn't working before, but we're we're, we're ready to go. And um, um, if if you like the music, that was um, uh, Paganini's Violin Concerto Number no. One, one of my favorite uh, uh, concertos and violin pieces. And uh, this is uh, Mark from Right Line Trading. And what we're going to be, go be going over today is a really unique way of investing. Um, I've been doing it now for about three and a half years, and it has been exceedingly profitable. It is very different than options trading with any other service or any other uh, system or methodology. Um, what you're going to see is something that um, it is a gimmick free. Um, no code's been broken. Um, and what we get are really stellar trades. Now, I just want to say um, in full disclosure that I take every single trade recommended by the um, Biotech block, Blockbuster Alert Service. I enter at the same price that everybody else does. I set my targets and stops at the exact same price I send out. Um, if anyone comes aboard and wants to see that, I'll be more than happy to show that to him. Now, just as quick disclaimer, um, the, uh, the information that we provide um, is for educational demonstration purposes only. Everybody understands uh, that investing involves substantial risk. And it should be, always be understood that you can lose a substantial amount of money. Um, I tell that to all my traders every single day. I'm never risk more than you can afford to lose. And just a little bit of, about my background. Um, I graduated from Ivy League University. I went to the University of Pennsylvania um, for eight years. Uh, and um, I majored in uh, applied, math, applied mathematics. And um, uh, I did my uh, master's thesis on um, the optimization of, uh, of uh, underwater decompression schedules. Um, so we're not really relevant to, um, to, the, to this webinar. When I graduated, I graduated summa cum laude with honors. I was inducted into the Phi Beta Kappa Honor Society. Um, and I spent the, the uh, first part of my career um, uh, teaching in academics uh, at, Jef at Jefferson uh, uh, University in Philadelphia on Walnut Street. While there, I published 15 peer-reviewed articles in top-tier journals. I was a full-time professor. I taught an enormous number of undergraduate and graduate students, which was very challenging and a lot of fun. Uh, they're very, very tough to deal with. They answer, they ask very, very tough questions. I've been an invited speaker internationally in many countries, uh, an invited speaker domestically in many cities. And I just estimate that I've mentored close to 30,000 traders um, in the 20 some years that I've been, that I've been uh, um, here at Rightline. Now, um, now, this is really based on a formula that I'm going to go over with you. And 99% of investors really do not key in on it at all. And the reason it takes so much work, and really you're going to see that it's not just me that, um, that does this, but I do this along with three professors at the University of Miami School of Medicine. All of them are full-time tenured professors. They are um uh esteemed uh and uh have tremendous notoriety in their field and i'll talk to you briefly about them and um as, as we move forward uh, and they really help me out now the trades that i take really are totally independent of the overall market environment doesn't matter what the dow um uh sp the dow uh the the e-mini or the spy um or the uh, nasdaq are doing these stocks trade independently and um 
a, da a huge downdraft in the market or a huge updraft is not going to move these stocks very much. They're going to move on their own unique catalyst that we will have already determined. We're going to know the date and we're going to be sitting in the trade waiting for it to hit. Now, these are all small cap biotechs. And the reason we choose those are because they have a small float. A lot of them may have no profitable medicines yet that have um, come to market. So when they get a major medication approved by the FDA, they are going to fly. Remember, their float is small. Um, there's going to be insider buying. We will already be in the trade. It's going to attract a lot of analysts. They're going to be in a lot later than we are. We're already going to be sitting and waiting in the trade. Um, we're going to know the date that the catalyst is going to hit because the FDA is going to let us know. So these are tremendously accurate trades. Now, um, we do use some fundamental and technical analysis, but basically these are all fundamentally driven because when an, a medicine is approved by the FDA, market sentiment changes and all the technicals on the trade change. So technical analysis plays a very small role. Fundamental analysis in these cases rule we're dealing with small stocks, small floats, many of them who have are not driving a positive um, revenue stream and are now going to be taken into, into, that, that, into that green for the first time in their history. A lot of them are very young, and someday a lot of these are going to go on be the, to be the next Amgens and Biogens. This is how all these big stocks started. And we're not going to be sticking around for that in most cases. We're going to wait for the catalyst to hit. We're going to get our 200, 300% on our options trade. Um, our targets are going to be hit, and then we are going to step aside. This is not a long-term uh, investing service. Now, I just wanted to show you a little bit about technical analysis. Now, the reason it fails so often, and it hasn't made anybody, a hundred million dollars or a billion dollars for that matter a trillion well no one's made a trillion but millions in, uh, of dollars is because it's all about market sentiment you can see the stock has created a nice area of support on a, a bottom hit bottom hit anticipation of a bounce goes right through now obviously before we would trade it we would validate the bounce but it's just to show that technical analysis really is driven by market sentiment. And in today's market, uh, where market sentiment just shifts with, you know, everyone's got their finger up uh, to the wind. And um, when the wind shifts just a little bit, um, everyone's very skittish. Uh, and they're willing to dump stocks like crazy at the smallest hint of problems. I mean, stocks take huge haircuts. Now, this is a market that just has no trend. It's in total chop and it's untradeable. We're going to be able to put all of this aside. I'm going to give you some, ex some real-time examples of trades that we took. Now, if you have any questions, I'll answer them all. Um, I, you know, there's already some great questions up there, and I will get to all of them um, uh, before I close the presentation. Now, the first I want to show you is Emergent Biosciences, Inc. The ticker is EBS. Now, we all know about the opioid crisis in the United States. Now, it's very difficult to call an options trade a gimme trade. Um, if you're trading Amazon or Google or a mid cap or a small cap stock. I mean, I've taken some trades. I started trading options in 1997 with TD Waterhouse. 
um, before it became TD Ameritrade and before it was purchased by Schwab. And uh, uh, it was quite a different company way back then. And there was just no such thing as a gimme. As sure as you might be, there was always some unknown variable that could foul up the trade. But in these areas, there are gimme trades. Now, I'm going to tell you that in, as an investor, I never asset allocate uh, you know, disproportionately. I'm always going to asset allocate the same amount of money to every trade I take when I trade options. And it doesn't matter whether you're asset allocating $200 or $20,000. You're going to asset allocate equally across every trade. But that is not the case with this service because the FDA had gave us an announcement date when they were going to decide whether Narcan was going to be approved for over-the-counter administration. Now, we know what's happening in the United States. It is really a wash of fentanyl. Um, opioid overdoses are just unbelievable. And to wait for Narcan to be, to be delivered via prescription, it costs a lot of people their lives. So not only was Narcan over the counter a gimme, I mean, there was tremendous political pressure on the FDA to fast track this medicine. Now, the one thing that the FDA must do is they must pre-announce the date when they're going to make a decision on any medicine. So we already knew the exact date when they were going to give the thumbs up or thumbs down to the over-the-counter uh, dis dispensing of Narcan. As you all know, it's been approved. And in fact, in New York City, I saw yesterday, they just put in the first vending machine that will dispense Narcan for free. You, 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 I think you get a pack of six vials. Um, doesn't come with syringes and needles. It can't be administered orally, but you can get Narcan. I mean, I mean, unfortunately, for, for the, through the same vending machine, you had a crack pipe, but you can also get Narcan. That's how prevalent it's been. Now, we got into the stock right here. Oh, this is when the FDA told us when they were going to approve the medicine. Now, what usually happens is, is that the stock is going to be somewhat rocky, but take a slowly rising uh, course, as other investors start to realize what's going on, now, I'm telling you, we are going to be in first. Um, we're going to take an options trade if this is an optionable uh, stock. 99% of them are. It's just really a matter of there's an, whether there's enough liquidity to take the trade. This one had, and we were in on the options trade. Then right here, the announcement was made. And the stock just got up. We got in around $8.75. The stock had a high of 18 bucks. Now we set our first and we preset our first and second targets. I was looking for 300% on the trade, and that's what we got. We took one, we, I, we took half our lots off at 150%, and our second set of contracts off at 300%. Having those in place before the catalyst date, before the FDA determines uh, their thumbs up or thumbs down is critical because implied volatility skyrockets, it expands the price of the option. And sometimes with very little price movement, boom, your targets hit. That happened today with us on Raytheon. Raytheon moved up 89 cents and it took out our first target at 50% as a 50% winner. So you have to have your targets preset. This gives you a tremendous advantage. And we are killing it this week in the overall options portfolio. We're just focusing in on our biotech blockbusters. Now the next medicine is Coherus Biosciences. This was also a gimme. I didn't list it as a gimme. 
Now, I just want to say one thing. I took an enormous number of contracts on this trade. I loaded the boat because I considered the over-the-counter um, dispensing of Narcan a gimme. So this breaks our rule where we're not going to equal weight every position we take. Now, I'm going to give you that advice in the, in the alert newsletter. And I'm going to tell you when I think you got a gimme. Now, we don't get very many gimmies. But when you get a gimme, you are going to back up the truck. Now, I, I don't have one here. I just forgot to put it in. But Botox 2.0 um, was given a, um, uh, I don't have the stock and I don't have the, have the, have the price moved. But Botox 2.0 was put on hold. The medicine was approved, but the um, FDA could not uh, examine the manufacturing facility because during COVID, they couldn't go into China. So then they, uh, they pulled out the date when they were going to approve the medicine. The facility had been inspected. That was a gimme. And man, did we make money on that trade. That was a trade where you load up the truck. Now, this one I think is an equal weight, but it's it, now we, we for every trade I put in the probability, it's called chance of success. We're not going to take a trade where there's a less than 95% chance of success. I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go forward, but that's arrived at between myself and all of the professors that helped me with this service. Now, Coherus Bioscience has developed um, uh, Udenkaya. It's an auto-injector, and it's a medicine that increases the number of white blood cells that you have. It's normally given to patients um, either receiving chemotherapy or, or have some kind of blood dyscrasia like, like um, leukemia or lymphoma, something that depresses white blood cells. This is an auto-injector. It senses when you need the medicine and it auto-injects it. I mean, it was really a leap forward in, um, in, um, in, in the management of our blood. We call them dyscrasias, whether they're leukemias or lymphomas. And man, did this skyrocket coheres. Um, here's where we got in, right near uh, the swing low. This is the yearly low at $6.30. And we took it all the way up to 18 bucks. This was another 300% winner on the options trade. And this was a 99% chance of success. The next medicine is Lantheus Holdings. We're still in this trade. Now, Lantheus was named by Zacks as one of the five mid-cap stocks with the greatest growth potential in 2023. We we're in at 72. We took half our contracts out or half our shares out at 100. Now, the stock is, is, has been retracing. It's trading between 85 and 90, where our holding time is up. Our hold is when the stock hits 120 bucks. Now, the one thing that sometimes you have to have is a little bit of patience. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But what Lantheus has, has created is an unbelievable cardiac and cardiovascular imaging platform. Now, the catalyst event is not an FDA approval of the system. It's already been approved in the United States. Our catalyst event is the approval of the system in Europe. Um, I can't remember the nomenclature for their equivalent of the FDA, although I read it, I, sometimes I read it 25 times a night, but it's still pending their assessment. And when that gets approved in Europe, that's going to take the stock, in my opinion, to about $120 a share. This stock eventually could be worth $500 a share, but you're going to have to hold that for a couple of years. We're looking for 120. Now, what this does is it saves an enormous amount of lives. It saves an enormous amount of cost. When you go through their uh, cardiac imaging platform, 
it can look inside the lumen of your coronary arteries and determine whether they're clogged up. Now, before this, you had to have an invasive study, you know, cardiac angiography, where a dye was injected into your body and the dye was, what was, was imaged as it flew through your coronary arteries. And you could see if there, are any, if there were any areas of blockage. This has totally eliminated that invasive and somewhat dangerous procedure. It also does a whole host of dynamic studies on your heart. Um, it does ejection fraction, pulmonary artery wedge pressure, a whole bunch of determinations that um, you can only do via invasive studies prior to the development of this imaging platform. Um, I mean, you know, Zacks is a great uh, assessing service for, you know, there's a Zacks one stock. Um, which this is, is really, really, a, usually a stellar performing stock. Now, we got in at 72. Whoops. Um, where, where did I put Land? Where did I put Lantheus? I'm sorry. Here's Lantheus. Right around here. Now, it, I, when, I, when I shot this slide, it only hit 87.74. It went all the way up to 102. We took out half our contracts or half our shares, and it is now retraced back to about the $87 level, and it is gonna head right back up to 100, 120. We're still waiting for the decision by the European uh, equivalent of our, of our FDA. It's going to get approved. This is another gimme. So we got in early, we got in before any other investor you can see how it was choppy road here but i'm telling you i had huge faith that it would eventually attract um big money it did and big institutional money eventually came in and shot the stock up now then there's sc pharmaceuticals now this is a an amazing medicine it's a, it's a ferrosamide auto injector I don't know if any of you have heard of Lasix, um, but Lasix, it can, it can be administered orally or intravenously or intramuscularly, actually. And what it is, is it's, it's, it's a diuretic, and it's, the, it's, it's a loop diuretic on the kidneys. It's one of the most potent ways of eliminating water from the body. I mean, if you take Lasix, you're gonna pee, excuse my, excuse my, 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 uh, my language, but you're going to you are going to eliminate an enormous amount of fluid from the body. Now the important thing is that because it's a loop diuretic, you get rid of a lot of sodium. Now sodium moves. Actually, water moves with sodium. That's why there's sodium pumps in the body. There's no water pumps. It would take an enormous amount of ADP to move a molecule of water but it takes almost no energy to move a molecule of sodium. But water always follows sodium. So Lasix is a tremendous way of eliminating water from the body. Now, where is that critical? It's critical for patients who have congestive heart failure. Their, their, their pump has just been damaged so much that if, if they, they tend to retain fluid. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen people who have those big doughy legs where you, you can, if you press on their, um, their, uh, their, their thighs or right over the anterior tibial surface, you leave your fingerprint because there's so much fluid in the tissue. Now it could be due to other reasons. It could be due to venous disease. Um, where you get varicose veins and you lose the integrity of the valves, but it's often caused by pump failure. Now this auto injector senses that and injects Lasix into the bloodstream and you start to eliminate a ton of salt. Water follows. And what they have found is that this really reduces the number of days in the hospital for patients who have uh, a diagnosis of congestive heart failure or congestive cardiomyopathy. 
um, and they have a much better quality of life, and they have a longer life. That's what the phase two studies showed. So we, could you excuse me for one second? My son is calling me over and over. Excuse me, one sec. Okay, so I, you know this wasn't uh, uh, a medicine I would have I would have overloaded. I would have taken it with a ninety nine percent chance of success. And there's where we got in very early when we were told that the FDA was going to make a decision, and it chopped around. This was just institutional buying. Up it went, and there was your decision. It skyrocketed all the way to $11.65. We got in around $6.60. Now we had an option on the trade, it was way over 200% on this trade. One lot out of 100, or half our lot, half our, half our contracts stopped to break even. Our second lot out, at 200% um, trades over. Now, since that time, SC Pharma, SCPH has come way back. But we don't care anymore. This is not a long-term investment for us. We don't, we're not interested in the bottom line of this company. All we're interested in is big institutional money and the momentum traders that come in late, blowing it to the top on that FDA approval. Now, I just want to really walk you through the process really quickly. If I want to make you uh, informed investors, so I'm going to use a lot of this nomenclature within the Biotech Blockbuster Alert service newsletter. I just sent one out um, uh, today about Eagle Pharmaceuticals, and I'm going to talk to you about it. It's a trade. I promised you a free trade, and I'm going to give you one, and it's going to be Eagle Pharmaceuticals, and I'll give you the ticker. Um, and this is nomenclature I'm going to use very commonly. I'm going to run through it as fast as possible because I don't want to bore you. Because at the end of the day, you're here to make money, um, not learn about medicine, physiology, um, all this stuff. I find it really fascinating. And to sit down with three professors is really just a, um, just really a, a, a it's really a, a major learning experience. I couldn't do this alone. Um, we have one professor. Uh, of immunology, and, and I just want to mention really briefly, there's immunology, neurology, and cardiology. Those are the three people I work with. They are, they are seminal guys in their field. They have tremendous notoriety. Um, sometimes they bring medicines to my attention. I do my due diligence on them. I do Medline searches. That's a world search of all the literature that's published in English. Uh, I'm a member of the University uh, a member of the, Univer the University of Miami School of Medicine uh, library, so I can get a, um, uh, a Medline search done by phone, and they email me all the articles. And um, immunology is the forefront of medicine. It's going to revolutionize everything that we do. And that's really where I look to. Um, it has revolutionized the way we treat autoimmune disorders. It has revolutionized the way we treat cancer. If you remember 20 years ago when you had cancer, you got chemotherapy and the medicine you got to kill the tumor was all, all killed you almost equally as much as it killed the tumor. It was so toxic to normal cells that it really debilitated you. Now, what they do in, with immunotherapy is they target specific antigenic sites on the tumor alone, and they can that's, that's how they treat breast cancer and a whole bunch of tumors, and that is really a forefront of medicine. They just came out with uh, on, a, on another stock that we took that I'm not going to mention here um, that uh, with a medicine to treat nasopharyngeal carcinoma essentially untreatable immunotherapy. Now, I think immunotherapy is going to also revolutionize the way we treat bacteria, which consistently escape from antibiotics. We make more potent antibiotics. They're smarter. They, under selective pressure, they develop resistance and they escape. 
we have resistant strep, we have resistant staph, we have resistant tuberculosis in which no medicine available or known to medicine can kill that organism. These people die. That is seen most commonly in Southeast Asia, you know, Vietnam, Cambodia, um, Laos, those countries, but it is now being seen in the United States and it's a death sentence. It's a slow one, just tuberculosis moves slowly, but you could be on five anti-tuberculous medicines, which doctors hope will provide some synergy. These patients just pro progress and die. The only thing that's gonna save them is immunotherapy, selectively targeting some antigenic site on the surface of the uh, tuberculosis bacillus and knocking it out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the drug approval process, but we're, we're really, you're gonna see, we're gonna be keying in on really advantageous immunotherapies. Not to say we're not gonna look at Botox 2.0, and uh, an auto injector for Lasix to, um, to uh, control congestive heart failure and imaging platforms, whatever's great, we are gonna take. I just want you, just to give you a little heads up on what I really believe is, is the forefront of, of medicine going into the future. 20 years from now, we're gonna be treating an enormous number of diseases with immunotherapy. Now, when a drug is first discovered, it's just, a, it's a, just a compound in a lab. They do preclinical studies. They may be done in a, petri, in, a, in a Petri dish. They may be done on rats and mice. I mean, it's, I you know, find it reprehensible that they can do them on dogs and uh, monkeys. They don't need FDA approval for that because there's no human use. That's drug discovery and that's preclinical development. Now, based on the data that is acquired in those studies, the company will apply for an IND, that's a new investiga investigational drug ap application. If the data looks sound, the FDA is very, very likely to give them an approval because, I mean, they're coming in really at the ground floor. And if there's any evidence of effectiveness, we're not looking at toxicity, anything, they're gonna give it an approval. Then there's gonna be an early clinical phase one study um, where there, it, that is just going to look at dosing and toxicity, not at the effectiveness of the medicine. It's maybe done on a couple of hundred patients, and um, it, it really is inexpensive to do and quick to do. Then the phase two study can be a potential catalyst for us, because that's where we're going to get data on dosing, efficacy and toxicity and it's a key result if the fda gives a thumbs up to a phase two trial they can put it right in the pharmacy so there's where we're going to be looking at the medicine now a phase two trial has to be done on a significantly large number of patients we're going to look at how effective it is how toxic it is um, and at the dosing interval and achievable blood levels. Now, a lot of medicines never go into a phase three trial. And that's where the medicine is compared with a placebo. That's just not required. And then it can go to a phase four trial in which it is pitted head to head with another medicine. I'd even put the phase four trial process in here. Uh, because that rarely happens because most of the drugs that we're going to look at are for medicine, are for illnesses that currently have no effective therapy. It's called orphan drug status and it's called medicines that have fast track status. When they get fast track status, I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. They, they are really very likely to get approved. They're gonna to go to the FDA for an NDA, for a new drug application. It's gonna to go to the advisory committee, and then we're gonna either get a thumbs up or we're gonna get a thumbs down. Now in three years of this service, between myself and my, my medical colleagues, we have only called one medicine wrong in three years. It was a medicine to treat Parkinson's disease 
We gave it a 98% chance of approval and it got denied. But that's an unbelievable track record. I'm gonna show you how many trades we took in 2022. Um, we are really killing it in 2023 uh, and only one medicine wrong in three years. I'm just gonna go over now really, really quickly what, what we're gonna, what they do. And once, once you know this, you're never gonna see this again or have to worry about it. And this is a medicine that we looked at. Now, very few people understand that ulcers of the stomach are, are 80% of the time are caused by a bacteria called Helicobacter pylori. Now, it doesn't have any effective cure. Um, ampicillin is used that eradicates the organism, but it comes right back. Um, 90 days later, if you do another biopsy of the ulcer, which really doesn't heal, it's right back in your face. So there, this is a this is this is the kind of illness that we're looking for. It's an illness that has no current effective treatment, and that's what we're going to be looking at and honing in on. And it also selectively affects people of in the lower socioeconomic bracket. So that creates the political environment to get the FDA to approve the medicine. And let me tell you, the FDA is a heavy duty, politically uh, uh, leaning organization. And we always look for politics to play some role if there is one. So the effectiveness of the new treatment, that's helicobacter growing in a Petri dish, makes these little white um, clusters of organisms. I don't know the nutrient broth here, that grows it really well. What the company does, they drop a whole bunch of novel antibiotics or combination antibiotics, uh, where they link two antibiotics together. This is the in vitro studies, the studies that are preclinical, and they determine which of these uh, discs that are, that are impregnated with the medicine give you a greatest zone of clearing. And that zone of clearing determines how effectively the, uh, med the antibiotic kills the organism. Based on that, on that data, I mean, they, they obviously may do some rat in mice studies as well, although helicobacter cannot, does not infect them. They might look at them simply for signs of toxicity, uh, you know, unfortunately kill them, sacrifice them, and then look at their kidneys, look at their liver, look for any evidence of toxicity within those organs before they go to the FDA and ask for an IND to actually start uh, um, looking at it in humans. So they're gonna get an approval and here's their application. That's the bridge between animal studies and human studies. And once this occurs, then the FDA, FDA takes over and it regulates how the medicine is used. You have to meet all of their standards. Um, it's either a medicine for commercial or research use. Um, we're really looking almost at medicines all for commercial use. Now, we're gonna start a phase one study. We're not looking at effectiveness. We're only looking at the safety of the medicine and the determination of the optimal dosing schedule. The medicine was, was a pill. Uh, it consisted of a combination antibiotic, um, amoxicillin, and a probenicid-like molecule, which inhibited its, its elimination by the kidneys. So it kept blood levels up for a very long period of time. And they also got fast-track status. Now, when a medicine gets fast-track status, very few medicines are able to do that. You have to make a special application to the FDA the FDA has to acknowledge that that's, this is a special medicine and we want to get this medicine approved. So we're gonna put it on a fast track. And once you get fast track status, the FDA takes you under their wing. They look at each phase of the studies that you do, make sure it meets all the criteria they need. They sort of baby you along step by step by step. So there's no intrinsic flaws in the study and the study will never, will never be returned back to you for some methodological flaw in the way the study's done. 
So the medicine received fast track status. That's when we picked up on it. And that's when we got into it. Fast track medicines on orphan drug illnesses where there is no current cure with great phase one studies are the ones that we're gonna look at real closely. Now, I already pretty much determined, told you what the phase one study is. It's, you know, it's where uh, it takes only several months to, uh, to, to complete. It's only between 20 and 100 volunteers. And actually, there are people that do this constantly and that's how they make their money. I mean, you're paid really well, uh, but you have to be very healthy. I mean, I mean, I mean, you can't be uh, an IV drug abuser or take fentanyl and get and get approved. But if you happen to have, be short on cash and you want to you want to uh, volunteer for one of these studies, um, it's really easy to find them online and they, and they will enroll you and they'll pay you a lot of money for being in their study. Now, 70 percent of medicines um, get approved for phase one, which doesn't mean anything to us. Now we're gonna do the phase two study. This means a lot to us. Now we're gonna look at the optimal dose being used at the illness, on the illness, um, in a much larger cohort of patients. And we're gonna look at its effectiveness. And if it's exceedingly effective, if it's statistically significantly effective, then it's going to, if it gets phase two approval, the stock is going to skyrocket. It's already got fast track status. Uh, the medicine is being used for an orphan drug illness that has no current therapy. And this is where we're gonna key in. We are gonna be in on this medicine well before the phase two results are released, gone to the FDA. Now remember that as phase two data um, are accumulated, it's published. And that's what we look at. We look at the published phase two data that will ultimately be, be sent to the FDA for them to determine whether or not to give the phase two composite study a thumbs up. That's gonna skyrocket the stock, but we have to consistently con continually be doing updates as new phase two data is released. And if the phase two data is stellar, when it goes to the FDA with fast track status on an orphan drug illness, it's going to get the thumbs up. And that's the phase two study. I pretty much already went over it. It's an efficacy study. It's a top line result. And it's one of the largest catalyst events in the development of a, of a, of a medicine for a small biotech company. It's, you know, it consists of several hundred people and it can take uh, several months to years to complete. So this takes some money to do. And we always look at cash on hand, but usually these small biotechs are exceedingly well-funded, especially the ones that we look at. Now it can go to a phase three. We're not gonna really pay that much attention. That's where it's, a, we, where it's done in a huge cohort of patients hundreds to thousands, it's placebo controlled, and there is no placebo. I mean, you, oh, you can placebo control this medicine, but it's not gonna ever be done. If it's effective, the ulcers heal, the helicobacter pylori, for the most part, doesn't return. That's as far as we're gonna go. And then we're not gonna go really, I've never looked at a study that goes to phase four. Now, now, I have one on my radar, um, but this is where it's a double-blind placebo where it's pitted head-to-head -head with another medicine that is currently the standard of care. Now, Interim Pharmaceuticals, to give you an example, is currently um, looking at a medicine to treat urinary, urinary tract infections in women. They're very common. Uh, there are of really no major uh, of no major um, clinical problem. Any urinary any urinary tract infection in a man requires a diagnostic evaluation of the urogenital tract. 
but less than three urinary tract infections per year in a woman is considered to be irrelevant. But ciprofloxacin or cipro, as, as you may be aware, if you've ever had a cold, doctors use it like water. And a lot of organisms are, are becoming resistant to it. Now, the medicine that ultimately got a phase two approval, oh, oh, in, uh, in the case of interim, they put together an unbelievable phase two trial. The, this antibiotic killed all the organisms that Cipro couldn't kill, yet they sent it back with a CRL letter, um, and the CRL letter is what you never want to see. It's all the problems with the study and why the medicine has got the thumbs down, and now Interim is forced with doing a head-to-head -head study directly showing that their medicine is better than Cipro. That's going to take them a couple of years. And I have that stock on my radar. And when we, when we get a PDUFA or an FDA date for a thumbs up, we're going to be in on that stock. Now, it's been about seven or eight months since the medicine was sent back. I, there's really been no good uh, clinical data published. A, fa you know, a phase four head-to-head -head study takes a long time to accumulate data. And for the most part, we're never going to deal with it. So I just want to really, really um, sort of pound down how important fast track designation is. Now, the FDA is only going to give fast track response um, when it's a new drug that treats a debilitating, life-threatening condition. So you're going to think of AIDS, cancer, diabetes, epilepsy. I mean, we had it when we when we looked at the medicine that was that was ultimately approved, and we made a huge money on to treat Lou Gehrig's disease or amyotropic lateral sclerosis that was approved. That was at orphan drug status, got fast track uh, designation, and it's it's a medicine that fills an unmet medical need. So that medicine gets approved, that stock is going to go crazy. Now, remember something, most of these medicines are not curative, they are palliative. Um, for instance, the medicine to treat Lou Gehrig's disease has to be taken for life. And you can bet, I don't know the cost of the medicine, but it's in the pharmacy. I bet you it could be $500 a pill. I don't know how often it needs to be administered, I'm not a doctor. I don't need to know. All I, all I got my money out of the trade, and that's all I'm interested in as an investor. But this is why these small biotechs charge sometimes thousands of dollars for a single dose. And this is why Medicare and Medicaid must reimburse for the medicine because there is no alternative. So if you have amyotropic lateral sclerosis, Medicare and Medicaid have got to put that medicine in their formulary. It's got to be approved. And it's, that's what really is really the linchpin of, um, of the backbone of that medicine, that the government is going to reimburse for it. That forces every HMO and PPO from uh, United to Aetna um, to um, uh, to, to all the other ones to also uh, reimburse for the medication. And it's going to bring that company in an enormous amount of money. Um, now, the, the, the benefits of the fast track I already, I really already uh, uh, discussed. Um, it, it's expedited uh, and the FDA works with you arm in arm to make sure that everything is submitted appropriately and they're going to love the data that they get. Now, once in a blue moon, they'll turn it down, but it's very rare for them to take a fast track medicine for an orphan drug and send it back. When it has fast track status, they've already made sure that the study is really, really coherent and uh, mathematically sound in terms of uh, statistical significance. So that's what we're, we're going to look at. 
fast track medicines that have on orphan drug at orphan drug status. There is no medicine currently on the market that will that will treat this illness. Now, now the professors and I are going to give it a chance of success. We based on a lot of clinical in, uh, variables of which they really sort of rule on that. Um, since they are preeminent in their field, I look at the at the short float. A lot of these small biotechs have really big short floats. You're going to get a short squeeze that blows the stock out of the water. I'm going to look at at the actual float. Um, remember that a lot of the shares that are that are um, that are currently out are held by insiders. They're held by the by uh, the corporate executives. We want to see how much of that float is actually available to the public. The smaller the float, the better for us. These are the kind of things that I look at. And um, we're already in the trade and we're going to give it a chance of success. If it doesn't have 95% or greater, we're not going to take the medicine. And we just sidestepped a monster loser from Intercept Pharmaceuticals that really everybody thought was going to get approved. And you know what? I forgot what it does. I think it was an immunological medicine. It cut Intercept in half. Um, whatever Intercept was trading pre-decision, uh, it was cut by 50% on the denial of that medicine. We gave it a, a chance of success of 80% and we put it in the trash. So it's not it's not only about the number of trades that you get, but it's about the number of losers you sidestep. Now, the FDA is going to look at a lot of medicines every quarter, and a lot of those medicines are going to get denied. And we want to stay away from them if we can. Uh, now, the PDUFA decision is just a is really a, an acronym for Prescription Drug User Free Act. I always forget what it means anyway. That's the date that the FDA pre-announces it is going to give the thumbs up or thumbs down on the medicine. So we already know the date. I mean, it's a window into a stock's trajectory that you don't get anywhere else. I mean, when you trade earning an earnings report, you're going to see unusual options activity in both directions. I mean, maybe there's, it's going to be 60%, 40%. That's what I oftentimes see. Nobody's really clear whether a stock is going to beat its earnings uh, as a consensus estimates. But here's the most important thing. You don't know what, what their guidance is going to be. Like analog devices, which is a stock we hold in the portfolio, in the options portfolio, had a really good quarter, but they had soft got forward guidance and it sunk the stock 20 bucks. Now the stock was already up $14 from that decline. And we are rocking on that stock and I think it's gonna be a big winner, but we don't have to deal with that. We don't have to deal with soft guidance. We don't have to deal with variables that we have no knowledge of. All we care about is that that FDA is going to give us a thumbs up like Caesar sitting there uh, on his throne with a, his thumb up and the crowd roars and the guy who's laying on the ground lives and we're going to make a lot of money on the trade. If it happens to be one of the gimmies, we're going to bet we're going to back up the truck and we're going to make a lot of money. I'm going to show you a stock that I, I'm, I, I, I don't have. I have to bring up my think or swim portfolio. On my, my thinkorswim platform, I'm going to show it to you. Uh, there's that's the CRL ladder. That's what we never want to see. That's what comes back. To, that, that is what comes back to us if the medicine is denied, and the FDA is basically going to outline all the problems. Now, sometimes a CRL letter is not, you know, uh, a wooden stake through the heart. Sometimes it's got inadequate data. It requires uh, going back to the drawing board, what, collecting additional data, like with Iterum. They have to go back and they have to, they have to do a head-to-head -head with Cipro. The medicine's an awesome medicine. 
Uh, but they want, they won't let it come to market unless it beats Cipro. Because there's so many medicines that already are effective against treating urinary tract infections. That's the problem when you don't have orphan drug status. And that's why we pretty much ignore these medicines. We don't want to ever see a CRL letter. Now, I'm going to show you some trades right out of the portfolio. This is Novavax. Remember, the portfolio has been around for three years. Um, this was a fast track designation for respiratory syncytial virus vaccine from Novavax. The stock shot up 125%. Our option made 364%. Um, we, we got in on the fast track designation. We didn't even wait for anything else because the phase, the, 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 the um, pre phase two clinical data that had been published was awesome. We made a boatload of money on, on this trade. This is Regeneron. We made a little bit less, but they made Ilea. I don't know if you've seen it on TV. Occasionally, there's, a, there's a, an advertisement. It is the only therapy for senile macular degeneration, which causes blindness in elderly people. I mean, the macula of their eye simply degenerates due to old age, and the macula is responsible for your 20-20 vision. It's where the rods and cones of your eye are the most, are the most dense. And when you lose the macula, you're still going to have vision, but you're only going to have 2,200 to 2,400 vision, and you can all, go all the way down to light perception only. So this is a major breakthrough. It's very effective in halting macular degeneration. It moved the stock up 55% and the option 157%. Now, these are not small biotechs. But these were orphan drug status designations and fast-tracked medicines that I just couldn't lay off. Here's Clovis Oncology, which was very small at the time. This is for Rubraca. Also, you might have seen it on TV. It's a major advancement in ovarian cancer. Remember, it is not curative. You have to be on it for life. You have to have certain... Um, uh, uh, genetic markers and the tumor has to have certain um, antigenic sites on it for the medicine to be effective, but it's in, but it is was a major leap forward in the treatment of ovarian cancer, which is which which was a major death sentence for a lot of women. Um, it got accelerated approval, fast track status, and then it got approved and it just blew up. We made 120 percent on the stock. 302% on the option. Um, here's United Therapeutics, just a small um, winner, 57%, 15% on the stock. Uh, again, I couldn't let it go. Unitoxin um, treats a pediatric brain tumor uh, known as glioblastoma. I mean, the full name is glioblastoma multiforme. Um, it is one. It is 100% fatal. It is most commonly seen in kids. You know, when you see that St. Jude's commercial on TV and your eyes, you know, your eyes water and that's when you reach for your wallet and you want to make a contribution because they never bill the patient for anything and they give really groundbreaking therapies. I mean, unitoxin was a major advancement in the treatment of, um, of glioblastoma in, in, in the pediatric um, age group. And John McCain, the politician, had, had a glioblastoma. It's sometimes you see it in, um, in, el in elderly patients, but it's most common in children. And it's, it, it is inexorably progressive, and it leads to death. Unitoxin was a major advance. It made us really nice money. And at the, at the same time, I mean, it was a big advancement for the treatment uh, of the illness. Again, it's only palliative. It is not curative. That's the sad part of it. Now. Now, I'm going to show you a couple. I want to show you how they come out in the letter. Now, this is Amelix. Uh, that, the ticker is AMLX. And here's how I wrote it. You know, Amelix Pharmaceuticals is a clinical, clinical stage by a pharmaceutical firm. It's developing a new therapeutic. The medicine had no name yet. It is called AMX0035 for the treatment of Lou Gehrig's disease, amyotropic lateral sclerosis. I went into a little bit of a description, it's a progressive neurogenic 
neurodegenerative disease. It causes a loss of nervous system input to muscles. And what you die from really is respiratory failure. You can't make your diaphragms move. So you can't inhale and exhale. I mean, you get muscle atrophy and weakness, but the ultimate death is really from respiratory failure. And 100% of patients who get ALS die. Now, with the development of this medicine, it is extremely effective. So it was, I, I, you know, I want to inform you, I wrote it's a proprietary combination of this medicine I can't even uh, pronounce, uh, and sodium phenylbutyrate um, in a synergistic ratio to block mitochondrial stress that's placed on muscle. And there's how the medicine behaved at the announcement of the FDA thumbs up. Monstrous spike in volume, up it went. We were in it way before this occurred. We made 147% on the option. I would have thought we would have made more, but that's all we did and that's all I'm gonna um, say. But you can see, I explain everything. The targets are set for you, I set the entry price for you, I set the stop for you, I manage the trade for you, and we're all in it together. Now, Amicus Therapeutics, FOLD, um, they made a medicine. This is um, an, this is immunology, um, uh, not 101, but immunology 1 million in one. Um, what they did was they created an enzyme that replaced um, uh, an enzyme storage, an enzyme that was missing in the gen, in the genome of these patients. Now, um, the disorder the, the the disorder is known as Pompe's disease, and it was too sad for me to even publish or put in pictures of of like young kids who have this disease. I mean, they are simply like become twisted, gnarled human beings. And what happens is, you know, when you take in food, um, no matter what you take in, it is broken down to glucose and stored in the, bo in the body as glycogen. Now, ultimately, if you eat too much and you get chubby, like, like me and, you know, a, large, a huge number of people in the United States, it moves from glycogen to fat. Um, and, if you, and if you work out a lot, then it's going to move from glycogen and it's going to um, go to muscle and it's going to feed muscle and muscle is going to hypertrophy. But in these patients, once the glucose is stored as glycogen in muscle in these little packets called vacuoles or lysozymes, they can't break it down. It just continues to build up in these packets. The muscles uh, become wasted because these packets are auto-destructive and they basically, I mean, destroy your ability to move. And it usually leads to death by age 10. This was a fast track orphan drug medicine um, for a medicine called Pompey's disease that had no therapy. And we, it was not only debilitating, but these patients died in tremendous pain. Um, and if you, if you ever, if you, I mean, if you wanna be a little bit of a masochist, and you want to see it, Google Pompey's disease and look at some of the kids who have it. It's horrific. Now, here's the approval. Boom. I didn't put the percentage in here. I forgot. I don't remember, so I'm not going to just pull a percentage off the top of my head. But we were in very early, and you can see how investors picked up on it way after we did. And there's the gap, and there's the FDA approval. And there's that big spike in volume. And we, there was a huge spike in volume here to push it up to 936. We made really good money. I don't remember the exact percentage, but we were in on the option. Now, here's our 2022 performance. I had 18 trades and only two losers. Um, I had a loser on Kayla Pharmaceuticals, uh, a loser on Heron. Uh, therapeutics. Now, remember, I told you I only called two met one medicine wrong um, between myself and, and the doctors um, in three years. Every now and then, an FDA approval leads to the collapse of the medicine. It's very rare, but people buy the rumor and sell the news. 
but I've gotten wise to it. So what we now do is look at the effect of the medicine on the bottom line of the company. It's not gonna bring in a lot of money. We're gonna stand away from it and we're gonna lower its chance of success below the threshold to which we're gonna take the medicine. Uh, we're gonna take the trade. Now, these are all the stock percentages, not the option percentage. I didn't wanna put the option percentage up because they vary uh, with implied volatility. Um, there's a lot of variables that go into how much you make off an option. I wanted you to see how much you actually make off the movement of the stock itself. Now, we're always going to um, tr yeah, try to take the option. Once in a while, we're stuck with taking the stock. Now, almost every one of these uh, trades are optionable. But every now and then, the options chain is just deader than a doornail. There's no open interest. The spread between the bid and the ask is enormous. And trust me, as an options trader who's taken low volume options trades before, they're a nightmare to manage because market makers don't know where to put the midpoint. So one day you'll be up $1,000 and the stock hasn't moved a cent. It's simply because the market makers are flipping or playing around with the midpoint. Then the next day you're down a thousand, that thousand comes right out because the market makers have reset the midpoint. So we don't deal with that. So every now and then we have to take a stock trade. Now, normally the stock is very inexpensive and I'm gonna show you one that we're in. Now, we have approximately a 91% win rate, which is gonna actually go higher because we're gonna step aside on those medicines where it is not perceived by investors to bring a lot of money to the bottom line of the company. So we've learned. So I believe that one winner, I'm telling you, you take a few contracts, you have a small account, it'll pay for a year of the service. I'm telling you. Now I want before before I get, I mean I have you know I have some, a million five stars. Blockbuster buy to is just what I've been looking for. I get my trades each week from Mark. I'm amazed at how accurate they are. After a 45% increase in my account in the first two months, I'm a member for life. Thanks, Mark. I mean, we really, I mean, I, you know what I do? I mean, a lot of people, when they sit at night, they watch television in bed. I mean, I'm, I'm a single guy. I've already, I've already raised my son on my own. I mean, he's off and he lives at school. Um, I mean, he's in a dorm. Um, he just, you know, he, call, he, he calls me only to, only to ask for money. Uh, and um, uh, or when he has a problem, like like every other teenager, or, or uh, I, you know, now he's a little bit older than that. But um, well, when I sit at night is I, I sit and I look at stocks and I look at small biotechs sp specifically. Um, you know, I give Mark's biotech alert service a try. I have to say that he surely knows his stuff when it comes to biotech companies. His first three trades uh, were all over 100% gains. Thank you, Mark. Um, and it really, it's not just me, it's the three, it's the three professors that I work with. I, no way I could do this alone. You know, uh, I've grown my account to under 5%. We call great trades and I take every trade I call. Now I'm not gonna show you that. I, what I wanna do first is I just wanna bring up my Thinkorswim platform and I'm gonna show you a trade that I, I never, I, I wasn't necessarily intending to do, but I, I, I just think I'm gonna take a, an extra, Five more minutes and I'm gonna do it. It's notable for the fact that I bought more shares of stock in this company than any company that I have ever done in my entire life. And I'll, I, and, uh, and I'll show you how I did it. I just don't wanna put my password in, uh, you know, The platform will come up in a second. It's actually coming up on another screen. And I'm just gonna, what I wanna do is I just wanna bring up a raw chart with no indicators. So I'm just gonna bring over the, um, the uh, this chart. And I'm gonna uh, remove the drawing tools.
remove drawings, clear drawing set. And we'll look at 180 day of this stock. It's called Sidara, C-D-T-X. Oh, I'm in the wrong ticker, sorry. Sidara Therapeutics. Now you can see it traded up to $2.01. Now we got in on the trade um, when the stock was trading for a buck 35 and it drove itself all the way up to $2.01. Now normally, now we had to buy the stock because the options were just not, there was, there was, there was no action on the options. And for $1.35, even if you have a small account, you can buy 100 um, shares. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, maybe it's about 400 bucks. So then it released earnings, which were, were kind of disappointing. And it went all the way to underneath a dollar. Now, Sedara is one of the rare stocks that we're going to buy and hold for about two years. It's got multiple catalysts coming up in 2023. It's got multiple catalysts coming up in 2024. It's, it's price target from most brokerages are six to eight bucks. And I'll tell you something, I, th this is something I never do with a loser. I don't average down on losers, ever. Um, if, I, if a stock is down and out, especially on an option, and I'll tell you, we had three monster winners this week so far. I mean, huge percentages. I closed a loser today on Visa because I saw unusual options activity uh, against the trade and Visa was down. I blew it out of the portfolio. I think we lost about 45% on the trade, but we made it all back on our, um, on our first target on Raytheon. So um, and then we ha and then we have an enormous amount of money on um, DDOG um, and uh, also we we blew through two targets on um, Honda Motors in about uh, eight days, but 115 percent on Honda. But anyway, getting back to this, it slumped under a buck, and I bought 35,000 shares when it was under a dollar. Now my initial purchase was somewhere between a buck 35 and a buck 30. I am so positive that this medicine is ultimately going to go to five or six bucks. That that is the biggest purchase in terms of the number of shares I have made in years in years. So I own 35,000 shares of this stock that I paid 99 cents for. Now it's trading at a buck 27. And with that average down, I told everyone in the newsletter that if they had the capital, this was the rare time we're gonna take this, this fallback and we're gonna leverage it. And to throw what they could at the trade and take it under a dollar to bring our cost basis down. If you did, you're up on the position. Now I have 35,000 shares plus what I purchased initially. So I'm in, in this trade and I'm gonna hold this trade probably for 18 months to two to three years. And I'm gonna make enough money off this trade, I believe, to either buy a home for my son or to put down a, 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 enough money to make a huge down payment on a house because this stock is going right back not only to two dollars but it's going to go even higher it's going to go to four to six bucks it's got so many catalysts now it's got it's got a unique immunological platform that keeps churning out novel medicines um they're all in phase one phase two trials and they're going to hit pop 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 two this year and two in uh, 2024, they're all gonna bring enormous money to the bottom line of Sedara. So whatever happened in its previous earnings, I don't care. Uh, I mean, I'm taking it on its, 
a future potential and um, I'm already up a nice amount of money on it. And I just, I really just wanted to show it to you. Um, I've never taken 35,000 shares of anything um, since the dot-com days. And those are, you know, those are all long over. I never, well, I never bought 35,000 shares of anything actually, um, but uh, in the dot-com era, um, I traded like a lunatic. So let me show you the service. Now it's $9.97 per year. It's normally $29.97. It's $2.97 per quarter. Um, for the first 10 who come aboard, you're going to get um, three uh, bonuses. You're going to get this tiny biotech. It's a, it's a $4 trillion medical revolution, an Apple's chip maker poised to dominate healthcare. I'm already invested in both stocks in, in, these, in these monographs. It took me a long time to write them. They're both 15 pages, both, and they're both not junk. Uh, I think they're going to re revolutionize the way healthcare is made. That's why I would. I that's why I ha have uh, um, stock in Teladoc because I believe Teladoc into the future is going to be the way that healthcare is provided throughout the world. Too many people right now don't have access to healthcare. In, in you know in most of Africa, uh, Asia. I mean, it just doesn't exist. And and I think that uh, telemedicine is the wave of the future. Obviously, it's been a rocky ride with Teladoc. No big deal. I, I, I'm just going to close with this. And you're also going to get our bi-weekly small biotech update sessions. We're going to sit down together. We're going to talk about our positions. I'm going to write you very long Sunday night newsletters where I'm going to um, give my opinion on each position that's open, where um, I'm most likely to give you new trades. New trades are all FDA dependent, and they tend to come in clusters. It's like the FDA tends to go into hibernation like a bear where they start taking 17 hour lunches and they just don't do any approvals. And they just sit like, you know, like an inert bureaucratic entity that they are. And then all of a sudden they'll hit us and we'll get five or six trades in 10 days. So they tend to really cluster. So I can't tell you when you're gonna get the trades because I am dependent upon them to publish their, uh, their PD UFA dates or FDA decisions, thumbs up, thumbs down. I gotta do my homework. It takes a little bit of time. I got to meet with the professors, but I'm going to provide you with the cream of the crop. The vast majority are going to be orphan drug status medicines for illnesses with no cure that have fast track status. That gives them a very unique position. The ones that are not like that, like Lantheus with their, with their um, uh, imaging platform, is a medical revolution, is it really an evolutionary step in the way we look at our whole vascular tree and um, our heart. Uh, I, I mean, you, if you look at the, a lot of their, uh, their phase two published articles, you can see the imaging studies they do. They're unbelievable, the way they show the heart. I, I mean, you can't believe this has really been done. I mean, you can look at each coronary artery by moving your mouse and rotates the heart around, and you can you can kind of walk through each coronary artery. So if you have like a 90% block, there's a left anterior descending, right anterior descending, and then there's a major coronary artery, I can't remember what it's called, of those three, you can have bypass surgery before you even have a heart attack, which is coming. And by doing that, you spare all the cardiac muscle. So you have no cardiac damage, you now got free flowing blood vessels in the heart. It saves an enormous amount of lives. So um, I'll let, let me answer any questions that you have. Um, and uh, I really appreciate your time. I'm very enthusiastic about the service because I personally really love it. Uh, and um, I, you know, it's sort of my baby. And uh, I, I uh, really spend an inordinate amount of time doing it. Right, let me go. How long are you setting the trade for? Okay. Uh, okay, um, Janine, we trade 85 to 90% of the time we're going to trade the option. And we're not going to trade the stock. Remember, 95% of these trades are short-term holds. Now, we, when the PDUFA day or the FDA decision day comes out, 
we're going to go into the trade about a month to five weeks before the date. So most of these trades are about six week holds um, in general. That's the duration of the trade. Um, and remember, for most of these um, trades, we're not looking for the stock to appreciate massively. We just want to get that massive surge on the FDA announcement, hit our targets, and let, let the position go. And whatever happens to it after that, say la vie. We're not coming back to it. We're not trading technical analysis here. I mean, I see a lot of trades that fall and then are looking to break out again and close a gap. Uh, that is not the purpose of this service. The purpose of this service is to take catalyst event tr driven trades. I don't want to trade technical analysis on this service because our win rate is too high using it. Um, a smaller float is better, uh, Jeannie, because a smaller float, it affects the price of the stock more radically. Let's say there's only a, a 2 million shares out of the stock uh, or a million and a half shares. And all of a sudden, there's this massive wave of buying. It's going to take that stock up. I mean, I don't know what the float is on Google, but there's probably 500 million shares of Google outstanding. So a small float is, means that the stock price is very sensitive to the buying and selling, of the underlying buying and selling. And that's what we want, because we want to leverage implied volatility on the trade as much as we want to leverage stock price movement. And that sudden jolt in price, remember that the results always come out after hours. So the stock is going to gap at, at night. Then when you when, when the stock trades in the morning, you're almost always going to going to click out your first target, which is going to be a hundred percent or more, just based on implied volatility. Then we're going to try to take out our second at two to three hundred percent. As soon as we get our first target, we move our stop to break even. We've got half of our contracts out, and we're in the trade at no risk. If for some reason the stock collapses, then we already got our 100%, our stops at break even, and we don't lose a penny on the remaining contracts. Yeah, like I said, Jeannie, we target it on the PDUFA. We've got our stops and targets all set, and, and we get in and out. CDFX CEO and president purchased 50,000 shares. Thank you, Gordon. On 337, they pub these guys published. Uh, they, these guys uh, bought 50,000 shares. The insiders are buying Sidara, CDTX. Now it took a pounding, but I'm telling you, for me, it was just another buying opportunity to go back in and buy at a lower price. So uh, I bought 35,000 shares. They bought the insiders bought 50 on top of what they already own. When you see insider buying on a small biotech and it's the guys who own the company, you know they have major faith that that stock is going higher. That's a really good sign. 327.23. Thank you so much, Gordon. I bought four. I bought it at 99 cent limit, and it took the whole day to fill, Gordon. I mean, it, it filled it in little pieces, little pieces, little pieces. It may have taken a day and a half. I just don't remember. I mean, I didn't get those 35,000 shares in one click. I can tell you that. Hey, Jeannie, you're going to, listen, when you get a PVUF day, you're going to get a triple digit winner. That's correct. You're very rarely going to get less than that. Thank you for a great presentation. Could your service be used by someone who has never placed an options trade and doesn't have an options account? How would someone learn that side of things? It's never, James, there's no such thing as a silly question. Um, this really isn't a service to teach you how to trade options, but here's really the bright side of it. We don't trade spreads. Like we're not going to take a vertical spread, a calendar spread. You know, we're not going to take an iron condor. We buy calls. That's it. We don't buy puts. 
we buy it's the simplest trade so if you get approved to trade options which you will get you'll just get approved in your account to trade calls and trade puts and that's just automatic if you ask for it that's all you need now i'm going to give you the trade so say it's uh stock xyz um if you need me to walk you through it you call and i'll walk you through the, through the first trade but i'm going to give you the strike price the expiration date and i'm going to give you the limit entry order that you're going to pay for the option and you're going to dial that into your account really really easy it's the simplest options trading possible you will never ever see a spread trade that destroys the utility of the whole service spreads obviously cushion your downside but we don't well, we don't care we don't want our upside limited we want that thing to fly so you you'll you will sort of be ushered into options trading on the simplest trading method known which is we're just buying we're just buying calls and i'm going to give you the exact price so it's a good way to, to initiate yourself into trading and like i said i'll walk you through the, through the first trade if you need it james and we're just going to be repeating the same trade over and over again we're going to buy a call at a certain strike and a certain expiration date at a certain limit order. if you are a new options trader can you yes if you're a new options trader you will get approved to, tr to trade calls and puts i mean even if you say you have no options experience calls and puts you will get permission to trade um because remember that's always has a limited downside and that's what these platforms are scared is that if they give you complex options permission you're going to start selling puts and selling calls where your downside is unlimited and you can wipe out your whole portfolio in one day if you spend $200 to buy calls, the most you can lose is $200. So that's why they, you know, they don't have any problems giving you permission um, to trade a, a call or a put because you can't lose more than you pay for the trade. And you're not going to buy more than you can afford to lose because you're always going to take that into consideration, even though the likelihood of getting a loser is very, very small. But it's always there, and we always have to take that into consideration, GD. I mean, I'm always going to be upfront with you and Frank. I, I'm at the start of our relationship, and hopefully it'll be a long one. Uh, I'm, I, I mean, I don't run services on gimmicks. Hey, James. No, no, no problem, James. Hey, hey, listen, there was a time when I took my first options trade. I mean, I'm probably a lot older than you, and even if I'm not, everybody starts somewhere. So don't even, you know, don't worry. Uh, I mean, it's really, really easy to take a call uh, position and to repeat it over and over again, you'll have it down. And then you'll know how to go into, you know, to buy a put. We don't buy puts, we just buy calls. Now, how many, how many trades, Jeannie, the number of trades that go out per week or per month is totally dependent on the FDA. That's why I can't tell you how many. I mean, there's some weeks, We've now, I'm going to, listen, I want to be upfront and frank. We've now gone two weeks without a trade. And why? Simply because the FDA hasn't released anything worth chasing. We could have chased that uh, intercept pharmaceuticals trade and walked into a huge loser. And the one thing I'm not going to do is, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to feel, I, I never feel any pressure to throw a trade out to you. So I want it to work. Then you're, you're going to see what's going to happen. We're going to get five or six in a row, and all of a sudden, it's going to be bam, 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 bam. Now, there's a lot of trades out there that are setting up nicely on a technical basis, but I'm not going to send them out. We don't trade the technicals. We trade the catalysts. Uh, so that's what we're going to wait for. Um, I sent out a big update on, on, a, on a medicine, on a, on a company called Eagle Pharmaceuticals. I'll give you the ticker. It's a really good stock to enter. Um, I don't, we bought the stock. It's one of the most expensive stocks we have purchased. I'll tell you right now. Um, it got its medicine 
um, turned back, not outright denied. The ticker's EGRX, so it's up 3% today. Um, it's trading at $18.85. I haven't checked the um, uh, its options chain lately. Uh, it may be, it may have an active options chain. If anyone's interested, I will check it for them. Let me take a quick peek here. Nah, it just has no options. I mean, you're going to have to buy the stock, but even if you can only buy 10 shares, um, what it's waiting for is um, is the European approval of one of its medicines that has already been approved here. And it's a medicine that um, I, was just, I just looked at it today um, and did a lot of work on it. And actually, I actually spent the better part of the afternoon studying it. Now I'm getting a mental block on it. Um, I just don't remember, <laughs> but, but it's up for European approval. And when it hits, it'll, it'll push that stock up huge. European approvals are not quite as powerful as FDA approvals, but they're very, very important. So it's a stock that has come back on us. We're down about 10% on it, maybe 15%, but we will make that back when we get that, um, when we get, when we get that uh, 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 European approval. So I'm holding on to the position. And I told everyone to be patient on it. Um, we have a huge winner on Lantheus. Uh, I believe we'll, it will continue to roll. And Sedara, I showed you, if you average down, you're up. You're just still still sitting at a buck 35. That's going to be a four or five dollar stock. Those are our three open positions. And we're going to trade, like I said, most of them with options. Okay. If European approval is not so related to the market, you said there are several now. Insider buyers occur more. Well, that's not true. Um, uh, uh, Jeannie, insider buying obviously is more prevalent in a bull market for sure. But remember, these stocks move independent of, of, of the overall markets. I mean, Sidara Pharmaceuticals, if the NASDAQ, you know, it, it's a tech stock. If the NASDAQ, it, it's, it's, it's not in the NASDAQ 100, but it's on the NASDAQ exchange. The NASDAQ goes down 300 points. Sidara is going to go down a penny. If the NASDAQ goes up 300 points, so Dara, maybe go up, maybe we will go up two cents. It's waiting for a catalyst. And the people who are holding it now are really grasping it tightly. These are not the weak hands that are holding it, it's the strong hands. It's traders like us. We know its value. The insiders um, uh, uh, just bought 50,000 shares. These guys are not going to be shaken out of the trade. And it's not going to fall much at all it's gonna it's gonna stay right where it is and the overall market trajectory is pretty much irrelevant so um that's where we are um just let me make sure that um that jacob has put has put a purchase link in there we're gonna be we, we're gonna we, we will be sending you out an email but i want to give you the opportunity to be one of the first 10 because you will get um really valuable info let me just text him um, and make sure it is before I close it up. And I'm always here. I'm always available for you to call and talk to. Um, and you can always send me an email at info at rightlinetrading.com. Um, and um, we will uh, work together. And just remember one thing. I, this is the God's honest truth. And you're going to end um, if you come aboard. I, I don't want to send it out as a marketing tool, but if you come aboard, I will show you my thinkorswim portfolio if you want. And I'll show you that every trade that I send out, I take. If it's good enough to send out, it should be good enough for me. So I trade everything I put out there. So listen, everyone, have a really wonderful night. I really thank you so much for your time. I think if, if you come aboard, you will not regret it because this is not any kind, there's no smoke and mirrors here. It's all hard work, it's all fundamental stuff. And I've got three brilliant guys who also invest. That's the only reason why they, they give me their time is because I give them the best uh, um, option uh, entry price, best expiration, uh, and, and they throw a lot of really good stock, a lot of really good um, um, stocks in their field. And uh, like I said, immunology is a monster. 
Cardiology is also big, and so is neurology. Those are the three guys I have. Um, if I need a fourth, I know I can recruit. Um, so listen, everyone, have a really wonderful night. Um, it's my pleasure. Um, oh, you're, you're going to have a lot of trades in the next couple of months, Jeannie. Trust me on that. I mean, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, we've, you know, we've had, you know, it's always the silence before the storm. I'm telling you, um, it's been quiet, but then it's going to, I'm telling you all hell will break loose and we're going to get three, four, five medicines. And then it's going to stress out your, your, your equity. If you have a limit, if you have a small portfolio, I, you, I believe me, the FDA, when they are looking at medicines to fast track all the time, they're a political entity. They don't want to leave those medicines hanging out there. Trust me. Oh, thank you so much, Nancy. Um, I, listen, Jeannie, I can't give you an, uh, listen, I don't, want, I don't want to tell you that I'm going to have a trade for you in a day when I don't know. It's all dependent on an entity I have no control over. This isn't like in the stock market right now, I have five options trades that I would send out um, to my options alert service because we rely so heavily on technicals. But we don't do technicals here. We do fundamentals. We're trading the catalysts. If I have to sit on my hands, Jeannie, and, and you have to learn that it's really an important component of being a really sound, profitable investor. When there's nothing good to chase, just sit on your hands. Don't waste your money. And you know, I'll, just, I'll just leave you with this. You know all those guys that say, yeah, I bought Amazon at you know, $1.95, and I bought Netflix at, uh, at $2.45. You know how long you had to hold Amazon before it appreciated in price? 17 years from its IPO, from its IPO date. No, I've looked at it. Before it budged over $5 a share, it took 17 years from its IPO date. The same thing with Netflix, about 12 or 13 years. So those, people, those, those marketing gurus who tell you that the buy and hold is dead are the ones that don't trade. They send you the trades and they, they destroy your account. Now, we're not in that kind of investing here anyway. We trade the catalyst and we're out of the stock. But the buy and hold thesis is not dead. And, um, the, and the point I'm trying to make is we're not going to take a trade until I see a great one. And when it comes out, I want to risk my money too. And I asset allocate a, 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 you know, a, a lot of money. And I want a return on my investment. So I am not going to send out schlocky trades. Um, or trades with an 85% chance of approval. It's got to be 95%. And I'm going to list the percentage on the trade. Everyone have a really, really wonderful evening. If there's no link in there, you're going to get an email um, in about five minutes. And um, it'll have a link in to come aboard. I really thank you for all your time. At the very least, I hope you learned some things uh, about, um, about trading. This is a world of investing where you can make an enormous amount of money, irrespective of how the overall market does. Bull market, bear market, I don't really care. I have this segregated in a separate watch list, and it just doesn't move with all the, all, all the other stocks. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. I hope, hopefully, you'll come aboard. I do not think you'll be disappointed. I think you'll be very, very happy with it. Um, take care, everybody. Have a great, great evening. My pleasure. My pleasure to everybody, really. I, listen, I, I only give these trades out because I really want to make you guys money. Um, I do it anyway, so I, so I write up a newsletter. Um, and if I, if I had no subscribers, I have a lot of them, but if I had none, I'd still take these trades anyway. So again, have a great evening, everybody. And uh, I, I wish you all, all the best. And hopefully we'll have a great relationship. And again, you can call me anytime you like. Take care, everyone. Have a great evening.